Welcome back to Post Time. Harness racing may be America's original pastime, but the sport is popular from the United States to China to Australia and countries in between. In fact, I had the opportunity to visit a track in Ireland. And let me tell you, I was one lucky lass. Ireland is famous for shamrocks, Guinness beer, 50 shades of green, and of course, Bono and U2. And now in my Irish eyes, the country leaves a legacy as one of the most fantabulous harness racing trips of my life. So why exactly did I go to Ireland? Well, there's a race near the capital, Dublin, that takes place called Ladbrokes Vincent Delaney Memorial. And in 2014, it marked the third edition of this stakes event for two-year-old pacers. And in just three short years, it's become so popular that now it's the richest stakes race ever in the United Kingdom and Ireland with a purse of 28,500 euros. That's about 35,600 in U.S. bucks. Compared to our ginormous stakes purses here in America, that might not seem like a whole lot of money, but this exciting weekend of standard bread action at Port Marnock Raceway has been getting attention all over the world. And with all the buzz going on, well, you know me, I don't like to be left out of a good party. But I wasn't the only one who was excited to experience this big time talked about harness event away from home. On my adventure was Hall of Fame driver Wally Hennessy, who also happened to be the reinsman of my all time favorite trotting lady, Moneymaker. Anthony Butt, who is a Hall of Famer in New Zealand, and he basically tops the who's who's list of down under drivers. Steve Woof, who was one of my very first bosses in the harness racing biz, and he's a publicist extraordinaire. And Hall of Fame announcer, The Voice. Yes, you got it right, announcer Roger Houston. First, let me take you behind the scenes of Port Marnock Raceway into the paddock area, which is the part of the racetrack where the horses get ready to compete. In America, we're a bit spoiled. We have a gigantic, elaborate inside paddocks. Here, the horses got ready next to their rig, right outside of their trailers, or inside, if you had a swanky setup like this. And it was BYOW, yep, bring your own water. And there was no running water, but no one seemed to care. The vibe was all about having fun and having the opportunity to compete. One of my favorite people I met was Alexis Laidler. She's the leading harness trainer in England. She and her husband Rocker brought horses in for the weekend, and she brought her winning ways with her too. <laughs> Congratulations! <laughs> there were several horsemen from England, like top driver Mick Lord, who came over to race, taking both automobile and boat just to get here. And depending on where you live in the UK, it can take up to 10 hours of travel time. And guess what? While I was there, I ran into some Post Time fans. <laughs> yes. Thank you, YouTube. We are international. Great to see you every night on TV. Post Time. Oh, nice. <laughs> Thank you. You're famous everywhere. <laughs> I'm trying to be. The attitude and love for the sport that the horsemen and women have here is hard to explain, but I'm going to have Roger Houston give it a try. The, the term I like to use is the old ABC wide world of sports had the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. Well, in places over here where they race for harness racing, it's the thrill of victory and the thrill of competing. There's no agony in harness racing. Everybody has a good time. Uh, it's just a different mentality, so to speak, over here. And 
that yep. is one of the reasons I love to come over here because somebody in the States racing as much as we do, it is truly going back to your roots, so to speak. They've always referred to me as a county fair announcer. Man, this is as close to home as I can get. And just like you've probably heard, the weather can be unpredictable. But the rain doesn't damper the crowd attendance. Carrying an umbrella is just something you get used to if you live in Ireland. Now for the racing details. For some of the races, the post positions are drawn not too long before the race actually goes out on the track. So while the drivers take their horses in front of the stands for the post parade, there's this guy standing in the middle of the track and he tells the driver what their post position is right then and there. So the number pad on the horse doesn't necessarily match the post position. And guess what? I got to draw some of the races for their post positions while I was there. Oh yeah, I felt like a big shot. Many of the races are a mile, but there are some that are a mile and a half as well. And the track is not quite as wide as the tracks we're familiar with in America. And at Port Marnock Raceway, the gate fits for a cross. And then if there's more entries in the race, well then they're trailers. Then there are some events that are handicapped but obviously not by post position, but by starting position. Like some of the field will start on the gate and then the horses who are handicapped will actually begin yards behind those horses who are on the gate. And I absolutely loved that each and every time in the winner circle, the Connections gave a hearty yell to celebrate the victory. <laughs> Also at this track in Ireland, there's no regular tote system. Everything is done by hand by guys who are actually in the wagering business. We we'll wait for the winner all right. So we have to wait for the official winner all right. But we're looking good, we're looking good on this 188. <laughs> and they call that Lady Luck. <laughs> lady Luck, I love it. And guess who got to take bets and help the bookies with their wagers? On a side note, I also got to see world champion Irish dancers. And I met Elsa, the queen from the movie Frozen. Yeah, all at the racetrack. I know, right? Hashtag heaven on earth. Okay, back to the racing in Ladbrook's Vincent Delaney Memorial. My hosts, Derek and James Delaney, treated me like a harness racing princess during my stay in Ireland. And I was so excited that they had a filly in this event and she won her elimination. Carmel Camden won her limb with Wally Hennessy in the bike. That was Wally's first ever drive in the country of Ireland and it was straight to the winner's circle. So this is how the big race for freshman pacers worked. The eliminations happened on Saturday and the final happened on Sunday. Why don't we hear a little more about the story behind this big race from Derek. My brother died in 2011 from a sudden death. He had a massive heart attack and you know he used to help us on the farm all the time with the young horses. It's a part of the reason why we thought of having a, a two-year-old race for them because it'd be to be fit and tribute really to have a two-year-old race and we got Ladbrokes as the main sponsor from the off which was a great thing and in total we have 88 individual sponsors for the event which is great you know so it's an emotional weekend but it's also good that you know I would have never thought that Vincent would be known worldwide which he is now from the event it's all over Australia, New Zealand, America that really makes me proud you know. You're probably wondering if Wally got the job done in the final. Well, Carmel Camden finished fourth, but she raced great, and she was just one of two fillies in the seven-horse field. The two-year-old visiting victory lane for Ladbrook's Vincent Delaney Memorial was Titanium. He was driven by Vicky Gill. This is the second year in a row that Vicky has won this prestigious final. This year, she did it in 201 and 7. Oh, yes. I forgot to mention, in Ireland, they time their races out to the tenth of a second, as opposed to the fifth of a second, like we do here in the U.S. Hip, hip. Hey! Hip, hip. Hey! The racing and the atmosphere were identical, meaning they were both spectacular. And 
for any horse loving fan, I would take a pen out pronto because this Irish harness racing weekend has got to be written down on your bucket list. There's an Irish proverb that goes like this. A good laugh and a long sleep are the two best cures. I have to admit, I didn't get a lot of shut eye, but I made up for it with more giggles and fun than I could have ever dreamed of.